I have to go invade. <laughs> Let me ask you something, my little coconut fat bombs. What are the things in life that you consider inherently bad? Some people think it's crime, others think it's world hunger, some other rancid gorgonites think it's normal human beings leading a healthy lifestyle. You name it. When it comes to morality, there's a huge grey area about what is moral and what is not. But something that a lot of people seem to agree on is that using moon veil is bad. A war crime, even. To them, mentioning Moonvale is like casually asking a priest to have a seat over there. It triggers their fight or flight response. You will find amongst the sea of internets thousands of moulding souls violently assaulting the keyboard, making it very clear that they have a seething hatred towards the Virgil stick and anyone that uses it. And this doesn't come from a PvP standpoint only. PvE fans despise anyone who uses Moonvale for the game too. So much so that the most frequently asked question in Google about Moonvale is this one, which prompted me to make this video. So we got to ask ourselves, what is the problem with Moonvale? The short and most logical answer is nothing, because it's a freaking video game, and it doesn't matter at the end of the day. But let's actually dive deep into Moonvale history. First of all, what is Moonvale? Well, Moonvale is a weapon in Elden Ring. Duh. A katana-type weapon. You obtain the Moon Veil upon defeating the Magma Worm in Gale Tunnel, located in Kaelid. It shares the same properties as other katanas, such as the moveset and bleed build-up. <coughs> and its main differences are that it has intelligent scaling and a unique Ash of War called Transient Moonlight, which shockingly is a reskin of Unsheath with the difference being that it throws a projectile. The way it works is that you press L2, which puts you in a stance, and then you press either R1 or R2 to deal the slash. Most gamers use the vertical one because it travels further and deals more damage. This goofy, uh, projectile, if built properly, was able to deal a metric frock ton of damage. But Moonvale wasn't just a pocket nuke in PvP back in the day. It was in PvE where the weapon really shined bright. In PvE, the weapon not only was capable of dealing huge damage with a quick, safe cast, but it also dealt really big stance damage with its projectile. This meant that after receiving enough hits, the enemy would be left on their knees, and you could repost them really hard for critical damage. The simplicity and ferocity of this magical discount Yamato called the attention of your local Mr. Jimmy Casual, as G9 would say, since it lowered the amount of skill required to take on the game. You would see people chimping the ash of war to no end, disregarding skill and claiming victory after victory. It didn't help either that obtaining it was easier than catching a fistful of air. You only had to get the rock sling spell located in the street of Sage's Ruin in Kaled, which you can access easily by going through the transporting trap in Agil Lake. Once you have the spell, upgrade your staff a bit and go to Gale Tunnel. Defeat the Magma Worm by throwing rocks at him like the good caveman that you are. And boom, bitch, you got the Moon Veil. An unupgraded Moon Veil was good enough to trivialise many fights in the early game, and it only kept getting better the more you upgraded it. Lots of new Elden gamers did the magical Google search of how to find the game cheeser, so you would run into many specimens running either Moon Veil or the other cheese weapons of the time. Rivers of Blood, for instance. I covered the history of Rivers of Blood in this other video right here. Due to its cheesy nature, how easy it was to obtain and the fact that the majority of the casual portion of the player base was using it to beat the game, Moonvale got instantly labelled as a noob weapon. Being that the weapon was clearly overtuned for PvE, it received a nerf in patch 1.03 that for some reason wasn't stated in the patch notes. The nerf consisted of reducing the stance damage of the beam part of the Ash of War. Thus, more hits were needed to break enemy stance. The weapon was fantastic in PvE, that wasn't up to debate. But what about PvP? The Katana moveset was never too hot in that regard, and Transient Moonlight had to be used sparely because it was easily dodgeable by a skilled player, causing you to run out of FP really fast. Even worse, the beam is actually parryable by Ashes of War such as Carrion Retaliation and Golden Retaliation. 
And since almost 90% of the player base played as if they were brain-damaged baboons, defeating a typical Moon Veil spammer was not that difficult. However, this did not mean, though, that players new to the PvP scene would have an easy time fighting it. <laughs> because Transient Moonlight was still basically 1,000 damage or more at the press of two buttons. If you were unlucky enough to trade into it, which could easily happen due to latency, it would really cost you. Ouchie. But the real problem came when you encountered a group of gankers spamming Transient Moonlight. Well, not really gankers per se, but simply a group of normal PvE players, most of the time, ready to blend you into oblivion, since the tiniest scratch from the beam would put you in heavy stagger animation. And that was all that was needed for you to perish. Invasions were won by hosts and phantoms nearly effortlessly, and the average invader had little to no chance of dealing with it. Only top big boy invaders like G9 were able to manoeuvre around the Toho levels of Moonvale spam. This only solidified the weapon's status as the noob crutch that it was, tainting its reputation even more, even with the poised damage nerfs that the beam part of the Ash of War received in patch 1.08. Running into two low skill players running Moonvale was still very dangerous. But you could say that it's normal that in outnumbered scenarios, almost anything is really strong. For example, the most asinine Ash of War for gankers, in my opinion, has to be the Falling Star Beast Jaw Ash of War, because it basically forces you to dodge until the enemy decides to stop casting it. Two players spamming this in a non-open field with a third one chasing you is impossible to win, yet you don't see anyone talking about it. Moonvale suffered also from the Rivers of Blood effect, both in PvE and PvP. Gatekeepers would spit in your face if you even mentioned the weapon, and PvP nerds would be filled with rage and ready to throw poop at your corpse for using the weapon, even if they were using setups that were way better than Moonvale. In the current patch, Moonvale's just another katana, as pointed out by Waifu's awesome fans. But every now and then you still run into the occasional Neanderthal molding and seething at pixels on a screen. The weapon's reputation is now forever stained. Same as with other things in the game, using Moonvale will instantly make you a noob for a large chunk of overweight schmucks. If you don't play the way they do, they will seethe and mold, call you a noob and possible threaten to bomb your house. <laughs> It really saddens me to see the galactical amounts of gatekeeping and fictional rules of all kind that there are in this vast community. So much so that, again, people started asking on Google if it was okay to use the weapon. The community made people feel bad for using a weapon in a video game. I could understand complaining about it in PvP if it weren't for the fact that it really wasn't that bad in 1v1 scenarios, just a little overtuned. But PvE? Jesus Christ, go and add grass to the list of things you've come into contact with in your life. And that's going to be all for today. Thanks for watching, Tarnished. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, a comment, and share it with friends. Consider subscribing to Only Waifu if you want to see more videos like this. Until next time, Tarnished, I'll be watching you moisturize those goofy, ah, dry lips of yours. <laughs>